Welcome to Tampa, and thank you so much. Thank you so much for stopping your lives back home and driving or flying or traveling a good distance to get here. It was not an easy task for anyone, I'm sure, and uh, but I'm glad that you're here. Hope it works out for us. <laughs> Dr. White on campus my sophomore year uh, as the new assistant director of bands, and he was responsible for teaching band director one-on-one -on -one classes, and he gave us everything that he knew for his two years. He had a top flight band program in Jacksonville, Florida, that was one of the few bands in that region to earn straight superior ratings at state festival in Florida. If you don't know anything about Florida, that's a big deal back in the day. He just gave us everything. So for those of you that came out of my program, those 40 rhythmical studies and unison skills and chords and three bach chorus and all that stuff, that came out of his methods class. So pretty much everything that I learned, I learned from either Dr. Foster, or the, Dr. Foster, the band director, or, or Dr. White, the, uh, the associate director of bands, and eventually the director of bands. And he was scheduled to conduct the band in the Midwest in 99, but we had to change to the last minute. So this is his first time having an opportunity, we're having the opportunity to, to, to be with him. But he. Uh, he and Dr. Foster taught me everything that I know. They directed me into every, read every book about how to do my job that I have probably ever read. Uh, from the Art of Interpretation by Pablo Casals three times, to Kincaidiana four times, to everything I got in a little small methods class. So I just did what I was taught to do. Fortunately for us, we had a great applied studies program, so I heard great instrumental sounds around me all of the time. I didn't know that the great Florida State was a great music school, although that, their borders were one mile away until I graduated. Went to all their recitals, all their concerts, and their, their friends were over there, and they had the same education than mine. And I got out, and, and everyone said, did you go to Florida State? And I said, no, I was at A&M, the school right down the street. And I just didn't know because the, the training was good. So I wanted to do an appropriate introduction to Dr. White. Uh, he's now retired. He's retired about five or six years. And uh, so please welcome Dr. Julian White to conduct <laughs> Well, let me say that you excited. I am tremendously excited also. I thought about this all week. In fact, since he asked me about sometime in uh, October, November to conduct the band because I have watched this band uh, since its inception and just so proud to see what Mr. Alfred Walken is doing. Uh, he's correct. He was in my, my first methods class and it was so difficult. Uh, we gave them so much, and sometimes I felt un unmerciful. I felt sorry for them because we gave them so much. And then when I left, uh, Dr. Shelby Chipman over there took my place, and he increased it even more. You know, and I, I, I'm so proud to see all of my students, uh, my former students, and, and they can attest to how difficult it was. But look where they are now, and, and I'm just honored. You know, one thing a band director like love, uh, maybe I have a dream to do, is to come back and conduct the students once again. And so I have a chance to come back and see all of my students and conduct you, this very fine band that has my students, who, my former students who worked so hard. So thank you very much, Mr. Watkins, for this invitation. And I'm looking forward to working with you just for 10 minutes. Uh, and and I, have to, I can only do 10 minutes. As a band director, uh, as a marching band director, I have a tendency to go over time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> long. And, uh, and, and the last time I went over time, over time it cost the school two thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. Yeah, but you know we just we had a show and we couldn't change it. So I'm going to make sure, uh, Mr. Walken, that I don't go over time. But I'm, I'm right here in place. So if we could take the March Beyond tape and, and just to talk through it a little bit first, we'll play the introduction. Uh, the introduction. I'll give you one D, and you come in.
Thank you. And Mr. Watkins, just one thing. If I could have them uh, in Tallahassee, in, in, yeah, Tallahassee is where I live now. Uh, could you, could I have them in Tallahassee? Maybe well, just, well, air me over there. Air me, because see, here's the thing, too, that I'm amazed because I asked, Dr. Chip and I asked, well, well uh, do you have a bus list? Yeah. And uh, he said, well, I tell them what the rehearsal time is. And then I asked, well, what about meals? Do you have, you know, we're accustomed. Uh, I taught 50 years, and a part of that 50, 10 of them were high school and then you were in college. We had to provide meals. We had to provide hotels. Uh, we had to provide an allocation. Now, some of these guys in here know what these allocations are, and I promise you, we're still going to give them the ones we owe you. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, thank you so much. I just enjoy you. You are a marvelous, wonderful <laughs> Ray Kramer's work in the band field is about as legendary as they come. <coughs> Make this short. I'm on a, I'm on a tight schedule here. <laughs> <laughs> Hell with it. <laughs> no, I, he and Molly, his wife Molly, are synonymous as a, as a couple that worked forever. Uh, I, I met Molly with Ray. He, he came to the high school and spent a weekend with us in '95, I believe. And the quick story was that Ray came into the Symphony Band Camp and he arrived on campus about an hour and a half earlier. And the fourth band was rehearsing in the rehearsal room. And uh, he said, well, which band's that outside, Elvis? That's the fourth band. The first band comes in in a minute, which is the band he was going to clinic. And I couldn't draw his ear away from the band in the rehearsal room. So we talked, and he kept like this. And he looked over. He said, sound pretty good. I said, thank you, Ray. We kept talking. And he said, would you mind if I work with him for a minute? And I said, sure. And he was gone. <laughs> and they were playing a little Jim Square Engine tune, and he captivated those very, very young players and taught me a valuable lesson about what young, how youngest kids were capable of doing and uh, that they deserved the most honesty of us as teachers and his commitment to excellence and his commitment to people that had instruments was something that was missing in, 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 our, in our profession. So when I saw that he was going to be here as the CBDNA guest, uh, guest clinician, we had to play a, one of his pieces. And so I, I'll, I'll, I'll let him talk and rehearse, and uh, you can take whatever time you need, sir. Please welcome, welcome back to the podium, Mr. Ray Kramer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The theme of this convention this year is uh, the legacy of leadership. And <clears throat> I did a presentation about just the importance of both the terms legacy and leadership. And it just struck me as I was watching Dr. White conduct the band and talk about his association with Alfred. You know, every one of us in this room, every one of us in this room, we're all legacies of someone. And that person that motivated you and inspired you to still do what you're doing and doing it so well, you are their legacy. Thank you again for, uh, this is the second time that you have played a piece written for my daughter. I remember in the Chicago, From Glory to Glory, that we premiered, and uh, it was very special. This was the first piece, actually, that was written for her, and I'm still using the original score, uh, not the one that was published, that was sent to me, by Julie, and I have lots of notes in here. It really does represent a life. When, and I don't know whether you've read the program notes or not, but uh, you know she was very special. And Julie struggled with this piece. As she was writing this piece, she called my wife and I and said, I'm really struggling with this piece. She lives, you know, in southern Mississippi, and uh, sort of in, the, she's in a different house now, but she sort of lived way out in the country, and electricity and storms were very spotty and she was sitting there at her keyboard working on this piece and nothing was going well and they had a big thunderstorm and all the lights went out 
And so she did something that she never does. She went over to her acoustic piano and sat down and just started playing in the dark. And uh, she said normally she, has, she had four dogs at the time. She said usually when I play the piano, the dogs had either outside or in the furthest bedroom they can get to. She said, I started playing this, this tune come, came to me. And, and all of a sudden it developed. And then all of a sudden the harmonies came to me. And my dog just sat there right next to me and didn't move and just were listening. And to this day, she's convinced that my daughter sent her this tune in the dark. <laughs> and uh, she's convinced of that. Okay, let's just, just be a little bit more free with it. It's okay. Don't worry about so much piano. Just nice, rich tone. And... People ask me many times, you know, how, how can you, I'm, uh, I conduct it just fine. It's always after it's It's always after the piece. It's always after the piece. That's the hardest for me. But I, I love doing it because every time I do one of these pieces, it's like a reconnection with my daughter. And I know that she would appreciate how you play it and how you would play the horn part. So thank you very much.